Welcome to the Sermon Audio Podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our uh, Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with a young goat and the calf, and the lion, and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. He shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us that as we receive your word, we would receive it not only with joy, but we would also receive it in the way you intended it. That you would speak to our minds and speak to our hearts and teach us. Teach us your way of love, your way of peace, your lay, way in loving and caring for one another. Strengthen us that we may do that very thing. And so honor the one who came to save us. In his name, amen. So I'm going to ask a question, um, and this is a question for moms and dads. So if you're a mom or a dad, I expect you to raise your hand if this applies to you. (laughs) Moms or dads, I have taught my children things because I love them even though they don't want to hear them. Raise your hand. Um, And I'm, I'm not saying this to put my kids down, but every once in a while, you know, we have a conversation. And sometimes that conversation goes pretty well, and sometimes that conversation does not go very well. You know what I'm talking about, right? Because sometimes that's information they want to have, they appreciate in having, they uh, really enjoy having. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a uh, teaching moment. Um, Sometimes it's a chastising moment, and uh, they don't necessarily want to hear what uh, is being said. But in the end, they recognize it's important. And and I want you to to hear that as we listen to this passage of Scripture. Because that is why God sent Christ. The first part. Granted, there's much more to it than that. But what we're hearing in this passage of Scripture is primarily to draw us closer to God in a walk of faithfulness and of righteousness. So as we listen to this, recognize the kind of person that is coming to us in our Savior. We're going to start at verse 2. I'm going to come back to verse 1 later. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now this is talking about Jesus in his state of humiliation. He comes into this earth just like you and me, with the only one exception is that he has no sin. And so he comes into this world just like you and me, but at his baptism, he is given an extra portion of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we're hearing about. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and notice the gifts that the Spirit brings to him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge what his eyes see, nor decide disputes by what his ears hear. Previous slide again. I want you to see all of those things that God the Father, through the Holy Spirit, bestows on Jesus in his earthly ministry. And as he bestows all of these gifts, they're gifts that now he can convey, communicate, relate to the people of his day, but also and especially to you and me in our day. 
He wants those messages, those gifts, those blessings of wisdom to be bestowed on us. And he does this all. Go on to the next slide again, Ben. And his delight will be in the fear of the Lord. You see, this is the Father's will that he's doing this. The Father's will that he's bestowing his love upon us, his wisdom upon us, his message of guidance upon us. All of that is the Father's will. The Father is honored by his obedience. The Father is honored as he does his will. The Father is honored as Jesus does all of these things to bring us the message of Christ. And remember, it's all out of love. Because there are times, and if you're a parent, you know this, there are times that you've had to communicate to your children things that cause them pain, mentally, emotionally, sometimes physically, because you love them. Because you wanted them to walk down the right path. Because you wanted to protect them from danger because you wanted to protect them and sometimes even from themselves. And that's what Jesus comes to convey. Notice what he says at that last part of verse 3. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide, decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. <laughs> you know, we live in a time where decided things based on what I see and what ears hear is the way that things are done. True or false? And so there's a lot of times decisions are made. You're wealthy, you're not. You wealthy person, you win. True or false? You're powerful, you're not. You powerful person, you win. You're smart, you're not so smart. You win. Irregardless of the facts. Irregardless of right or wrong. Irregardless of true justice. Unfortunately, it's perverted. Perverted because... Decisions or disputes are decided by eyes and ears. Not by right and wrong, not by truth, not by justice, but simply by appearance. And what God is promising us in Christ, that's not the way it is with him. But with righteousness, in verse 4, but with righteousness... He shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with a breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. See, it's God's word that's that powerful communicating means by which he gives us the most precious gifts of love. There is no greater power of love than the word of God. And so he is infusing us with his power every time we hear his word. He is infusing us with his power every time we read his word. We are, we are infused with his power every time we dwell and meditate on his word. All of that is with that intention to follow the Father's will, but also to bestow love on you and me. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. Raise your hand. How many of you are wearing a belt right now? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, now, two reasons for wearing a belt. Raise your hand for the correct one for you today. Fashion statement. <laughs> Nobody's wearing one for a fashion statement. Jim's yours just is for a fashion statement? Okay, all right. Well, good for you. Holding my pants up. Raise your hand. 
That's why I wear my belt. It was funny. We, uh, I talked about going to the Badger game uh, last weekend with uh, my two sons, and uh, there were two people in two rows right ahead of us. There was one, a woman that was right ahead of us, and in the next row there was a guy right ahead of us. Neither one were wearing belts. Both of them should have been wearing belts. <laughs> and what was even more comical to me is the woman in front of us, not wearing a belt, whose pants were at half staff, is pointing to the guy ahead of her and laughing because his pants were at half staff. If that isn't hypocrisy, I don't know what is. And so I'm laughing at this, and that immediately came to mind as I'm hearing about belt. That belt it holds everything together the way it's supposed to be, right? And, and so for Christ, righteousness and faithfulness are what holds his whole message together. Because his whole message is based on everything that's right and true and good in the eyes of God. His whole message is based on the fact that he is faithful and keeps every promise and does everything as should be done. That holds everything together. How many of you have ever had someone say about pastor or someone else, they don't practice what? Because when that happens, what happens to that message? It's useless. When the practice doesn't go along with the preaching, the message itself becomes useless. You're not living it. Why should I listen to you? You're not living it. Why should I even take the time? And that's the point. And so with Jesus, every single time we hear his word, he is righteous. Every time he is faithful, every time. In every single way. Even though it sometimes falls upon unrighteous and unfaithful ears. When we listen to this and go back to the very first verse again, we hear about the stump of Jesse. And there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. Why did he become a stump? <clears throat> Because the line of Jesse, the line of David, became a stump because they had become unfaithful. Because they had become unholy. They had become unrighteous. When we listen to that scripture reading uh, in Matthew, in the gospel reading, you remember what John the Baptist said. And the axe is already at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit shall be cut down and thrown into the fire. Well, that's what God did with David's line. They became unfaithful, unholy, unrighteous, and so into the fire you go, I'm done with you. And now God's starting over. He's giving us a new faithful and righteous line, a faithful and righteous line, and that picture, if you would, Ben, it starts with Christ. The shoot that comes forth from Jesse. To communicate to us his love. Not just in words, although that's ultimately important, but also in but also in actions. Because here's the communication of his love. Here we see his righteousness. Here we see his faithfulness. Here we see everything that he does is for our benefit, for our best. And so when we listen to this word, and then we hear this message, well, how do those animals fit in? Go to that portion of the scripture, verse 6. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. 
The calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Give me a couple of more of those pictures, Ben. First one. Okay, who says this is a real picture? <laughs> who says this is photoshopped? There's no way. But what it speaks to us See, you have two kinds of animals that are in that. A tame, calm, prey type of animals. And you have a strong, violent, predator type animals. And we live in a world where people are one of two kinds. Either you're prey or you're a predator. And there's lots of both. And we see it in our world around us all the time. But what is God promising? He's promising that he's taking the violence out and bringing the peace in. Why was Daniel not afraid to go into the lion's den? Why? He was protected by my God himself, right. And that's what God is promising you and me. Not necessarily in the here and now, because there's certainly predators, and sometimes Christians fall as prey. But the point of all of this is there will be a time, go on, if you would, to the next picture, there will be a time as the little child, the Christ, leads us, leads us in a place where there is no violence, where there is no predator or prey. All are peaceful, all because of Christ. All because of his work on the cross, because of his work by his resurrection, because of his gifts that he sacrificed so much to bring us at peace with God, to bring us at peace with each other. Sin is gone. The consequences and the effects and all of the sin is eliminated. And because of that, there is peace. Go back to the reading again, Ben. Verse 9. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. So what makes the difference? The knowledge of the Lord. Right? The knowledge of the Lord is that relationship. And that's what God wants in us. To begin this peaceable kingdom in the here and now, even though its culmination will be further down the road, he wants to begin this peaceable kingdom in the here and now, beginning it in our hearts, beginning it in our minds, beginning in our souls, that we start to live at peace with each other. That we don't think of one another as predator or prey. Instead, we look at each other as brother and sister. As someone I care about because they're loved by a Savior who loved me. And all of that makes the difference as we all look forward. Next, verse, verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire. Read the last phrase with me. And his resting place shall be glorious. That's the culmination of every good gift of God. The resting place that is glorious. Heaven itself. We live in a world divided. At enmity with God, at enmity with each other, at constant, constant battle. But we look forward to a place where that doesn't exist. And that's all because of Christ. Because of his love, his righteousness, his faithfulness. 
Its resting place will be glorious. There will be peace. May it begin in us. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be abide with us all. Amen. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.